Hello, I'm Dr. Priscilla. I am the CEO and founder of Speak Excellent English. Today, I'm going to read part one of a story entitled Judy's Dream. There are three chapters in the book. Chapter one, Judy's Problem. I folded the last pillowcase neatly and stacked it with the others. Then I dumped the laundry basket on the floor, glad to have finished my chores. Mom, can I go and visit Judy now? I asked, making for the door. How about running a comb through your hair first? replied Mom, who was busy sorting the rest of the laundry. I scowled at the wild-haired girl in the mirror. Why was I inflicted with dad's unruly curls? Come here, Maria. Why don't you let an expert try to tame that wild growth, she said, smiling. Ouch! 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 I screeched. At the third ouch, I slipped from mom's grasp and was out the door before she could get the comb near my hair again. Judy lives in the house directly behind ours. Although she lives in the same neighborhood, we go to different schools. The day after she and her family moved in, she caught me dangling over the fence, picking plums. You might as well climb over, she had said with a laugh. There aren't many right ones left on your side. We soon became firm friends, and now we often meet under the plum tree. Judy loves to tell stories, and I like to sing. Between us, we know all of Bob Dylan's songs. Whew, I said as we flopped down in the shade of the tree. It usually took about three seconds for Judy to launch into a story about something funny that had happened. But today, she was strangely quiet. What's wrong? I asked cautiously. Judy let out a deep sigh. It's the march, she said. Mom, Dad, and Jethro have all gotten themselves places on the organizing committee. They're on duty that day, so that means I can't go. We discussed the march at school, but I hadn't given it much thought since then. Are you talking about the Civil Rights March? I asked. Yes, of course. Thousands of people are coming to Washington, D.C. Even famous singers and movie actors. And I really want to hear Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. speak. He's so inspirational. It's not fair, she moaned. I want to be involved in the march, too. It's a kind of protest, isn't it? I asked. My father thinks there's bound to be trouble. It is a protest march, but I'm calling it a freedom march. I've been helping Jethro paint signs. They say integrate schools now and freedom for all. Dr. King believes in nonviolent protest and wants it to be a peaceful march. So it'll be, just be, so it'll just be marching and speakers and music. Any singers I know? Only Bob Dylan and Joan Baez, Judy said, smiling. You're kidding, I shrieked. In my opinion, musicians didn't come any cooler than those two. This isn't just a march for black people. All kinds of people are coming from all over, Judy said. We reached up, tried to grab the same plum at the same time, and laughed. Maria, came Mom's singing voice from over the fence. Your father's home. Dinner's ready. I usually chattered away so much at dinner that my parents had to remind me to stop and eat. But that night, I ate in silence trying to pluck up enough courage to ask the question that had formed in my mind earlier. Mom, Dad, 
I finally said. I chased the last pea around my plate and spread it. Are you thinking of going to the Civil Rights March? Dad stiffened and dropped his fork with a clatter. There'll be nothing but trouble there, he exclaimed. Sometimes I wish we didn't live so close to the center of town. Judy's family is on the organizing committee, I said worriedly, and they say it's going to be a peaceful march. I'll believe that when I see it, muttered Dad. Judy says it's about freedom, freedom for everyone, not just black people to work and to go to the same schools as everyone else. I thought there were black students at your school, only a few, and I know that some states still have segregation. I looked at mom, who until now had said nothing. I sensed she was keeping quiet out of loyalty to dad. I've heard people talk about the march, she said, placing an apple pie on the table. Lots of people admire Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. because they agree with his methods of nonviolent protest. Dad frowned at his plate. That's all very well, he said. But with all these marchers coming to the city, it'll be a busy day at the bakery, and I'll need both of you to help in the store. Suddenly, the room felt chilly. I looked at my mom, but she wouldn't look at me. Then I looked at my father, who was busy cutting up his slice of apple pie. It was only then that I realized how desperate I was to attend the march. I also realized that I wanted Judy to march alongside me. That night, I took a long time doing the dishes, drying each plate, glass, knife, fork, and spoon until it gleamed. By the time I'd finished putting the dishes away, I'd thought of a dozen schemes for getting Judy to the march, although I had a feeling none of them would work. I decided to smuggle the last slice of pie up to my room, but when I got there, I found I was in no mood to enjoy it. So I put the plate aside, lay on my bed, and started to mull things over. As I lay there, I remembered my teacher talking to my class about the march, saying, It'll be a day that'll go down in history. Then she looked around the class and asked, who's going to go? Will and Beth had cautiously raised their hands. That didn't surprise me because they're the only black students in our class. I was surprised though that so many others put up their hands too. I felt ashamed now that I hadn't raised my hand that my arms had remained folded firmly on my desk. Why are you marching? The teacher had asked Will and Beth. I remember how surprised I was when Beth spoke up. I hadn't heard her utter a single word in class before. Beth is tall with long spindly legs, and as she spoke, her cheeks glowed. Do you know that in some states, we can't drink from the same drinking fountains as everyone else. We're not even allowed to sit on certain park benches, she told the class. That night, I thought about Beth's words. I realized what a struggle it must be for her and Will to be the only black students in our class. I realized how brave it was for Beth to speak out under those circumstances. Over dinner the next day, Dad mentioned that the marchers were already pouring into the city and that the government had advised workers to take the day off. What are your workers doing? I asked, trying to keep the excitement from my voice. Some plan to march. Others aren't so sure, he said. Before I could ask the question burning inside me, Mom spoke up. I've given the issue a lot of thought, she said and I've decided that I want to attend the march. Why don't you close the bakery so we can go together? I held my breath, hoping against hope that dad would agree to go with mom. When dad finally spoke, he said, all right, I will close the bakery for the day. I let my breath go. I'll drop you off at the march, he said to mom, 
and you too, Maria, if you want to attend. But I'm guessing there'll be a lot of strangers around and I'm worried about security. So I'll go back to the bakery to make sure everything's okay. I was disappointed my father wouldn't be marching after all, but I decided I wouldn't let that stop me from taking part. Besides, there was something important I needed to ask. Dad, can Judy come with us? Dad stared off into the distance, considering my request before turning to me and saying, I guess, as long as it's okay with her folks. I leaped from the table. Can I go ask them now? Wait, said mom. I'd like to speak to Judy's parents myself. We'll have to go around the long way. No fence climbing for me. Thank you for listening. That was chapter one. I will read chapter two. I'm Dr. Priscilla, the CEO and founder of Speak Excellent English.